this and I look around and I see how um, positive things are going for uh, artists today, I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we have a lot to be grateful for. Things are going good. I'm uh, greatly heartened by my experiences here at TRAC. Um, all the speeches and presentations and papers, they've, they've uh, got my mind spinning, just like uh, John mentioned. Um, I'm really filled up by all those experiences and I uh, can't wait to go home and ponder on them further. Um, but what else is happening here, which is um, in some ways even more tremendous, is all the, the little conversations happening in the elevators, the hallways, the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of you are crawling in from uh, late night. <laughs> um, it, what's happening is we're, we're building a real community here. We're not all alone um, in our studios anymore. Um, through something like this and sharing all of our our fears, our concerns, um, problems, and possible solutions, um, we're really helping each other along. Um, and I think that this can really establish um, the direction we all want to go um, way better because we're holding hands doing it. We're really. Um, <laughs> We're really fortunate to have such a group and to not just be alone in, in the cave, I call it, you know. We're all workaholics in our studios and not going out very often. Um, so this is a really special experience, something to be really grateful for. Um, a small side story. Um, my father tried to teach me and my husband how to weld which didn't go very successful. <laughs> but one thing I learned is uh, you wear a big dark mask and you can't really see what you're doing and um, <laughs> dealing with an intense flame, you're trying to bond two pieces of metal together and you have no idea how good the bond is when you're doing it. And the only test for that bond is to pick it up and slam it down and see how strong it was. If it breaks apart, it was useless. Do it again. And I feel like we're kind of doing that here. We're taking ideas and um, we're testing their metal and we're putting them together. And does this stick? Does it help us? Um, it's, it's a really important process and some things are gonna break apart and that's fine. It's just good to know that and good to do that together instead of all alone, you know? Why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> When I heard Odd Nerdrum speaking about his struggle um, for representational artists in Norway and, well, the world, um, I really felt him on that. I, I know that it really hurt him, and he spent a lifetime feeling like um, maybe a neglected child, you know, unloved by the art world. Um, but I don't think that we should share his sense of rejection. I think that we should reject the art world. <laughs> Why not? Let's just build our own. Let's just ignore them <laughs> and do our own thing. <laughs> because we can't accept their rejection when they're rejecting us for a premise which I don't agree with, which is what we're doing is not real art. Yeah. <laughs> If we endeavor to create a new art world and um, through our actions create new art lovers who appreciate and understand what we are doing, then we won't ever have to interact in that world again. Right. Um, I'll be the first to admit it, I spend way too much time on the internet. <laughs> and I know you guys too, I saw your Facebook post this morning. <laughs> but I think this is a really uh, important thing for artists, the internet. Um, Facebook, blogs, uh, YouTube videos. I think we can share our art really easily this way. It's a wonderful medium for, um, for spreading our art and for spreading um, connoisseurship and understanding of what we're doing. 
uh, we find each other there as well. We can kind of do this virtually. Um, it's always really good to get together in person. Nothing, nothing um, beats that. But, but we can maintain these bonds online and help each other along. Um, it's becoming increasingly important to use these tools to market yourself because I think that galleries are changing. I think, um, I don't see a lot of galleries representing artists anymore. I see them representing paintings. And that's fine. Everything changes. But we must uh, pick up the burden of presenting ourselves. Why, sh why should we let someone else speak for us? Let's, let's do the hard work and tell people who we are and what we are and why we're doing this. I know it's very difficult for artists to sit down and write if you, if you just want to sit at the easel and paint or um, sculpt or whatever, but, but I, I really think it is very important that we um, put some words and some actions behind our art in order to uh, let people know what it's about because there isn't really a general understanding of the art world anymore. Um, and what I mean by that is people have a very general understanding of wine. Um, they know reds, they know whites, they know regions of the world where it's grown. And people don't really know that about representational art today, not even on a cursory level. Um, so that's why we really need to open our mouths and start talking about it and sharing with people very simple uh, truths about it will start spreading. Uh, one problem I see with the internet is with so many unique voices out there, it's, um, it's kind of like being in a crowded bar that's it's very loud, everyone's screaming all at once, there's millions of unique voices, and uh, I don't really have an, um, a solution for this problem, but I do see a problem of uh, how will we, how will the cream rise to the top, how will we know um, that there is good art out there in, in a sea of bad art being marketed. Um, I, I think possible answers to this is a return of some sort of art critique again. Um, but that is a problem with the digital age. And it's also becoming a big problem for us because we are um, taking something which is very private, um, the experiences in our studio, and we're putting it on the, net, the internet, um, sometimes before the painting is even finished, uh, before we have discovered whether we thought it was a, a, a good um, understanding of what we were trying to say, um, <laughs> whether we feel very good about the work at all yet, we don't know. Um, sometimes works take a lot of time for you as an artist to understand them, and we're, we're uh, putting them out there so quick and getting responses so fast that um, we might be painting according to the responses and not according to uh, you know, what, what our heart is telling us. So, something to be careful of. Uh, one last thing I have to say before I hand the mic over is that um, I'm seeing a lot more uh, great women artists out there today, and that is something I'm really proud of. <laughs> It's inevitable that we will be seeing more great women artists out there. Um, all of art history has been just wonderful, and I wouldn't trade in one bit of it, but um, it's really half of our story. It, and now we're going to see a completely different viewpoint um, coming to the forefront, and, and it, will, it will show a mirror image of reality from the woman's point of view, which will be really beautiful, and it'll be a huge contribution to the future of representational art and art in general. So, thank you. Great, and you know, I was so mesmerized I forgot to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is about our experiences, right? Well, from you know your point of view as a working 